Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. All right, so in this session, what we're going to be doing is taking a little bit of information we learned about enolates and adding it to a little bit of information we learned about alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compounds and putting that information together. Okay, so today's session really isn't so much about learning new things, but more about learning how to apply knowledge you already have. Okay, so if you have your enolates down, you have your alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compounds down, Cool, you guys will be good to go in this section. It'll be very straightforward, okay? But hey, there will be a couple tweaks, a couple new things, but for the most part, the foundation of today's session goes back to what you know about enolates and what you know about alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compounds, okay? Okay, so before you get completely overwhelmed by this stuff I've written up here, let me break it down for you because it's really pretty simple. In this session, all we're going to be dealing with is three main reactions. And these three reactions are the Michaels reaction, the Aldol reaction, and the Claisen reaction. And believe me when I tell you that you already know how to do each one of these reactions. Because in each one of these reactions, all you're going to do is take an enolate, use it as a nucleophile, and add to a different type of compound. So you're going to take an enolate, use it as a nucleophile, and add it to a different type of compound in each one of these reactions. Okay? And hey, you've already seen enolates act as nucleophiles and add to different types of compounds before. When we talked about enolates before, we said that they undergo two main types of reactions. This was before. We said that they underwent alkylation reactions and halogenation reactions. In alkylation reactions, enolates act as nucleophiles and attack alkyl halides. In halogenation reactions, enolates act as nucleophiles and attack halogens. It's going to be the same thing in each one of these cases, except you're going to take an enolate and add it to a different type of compound. So in a Michaels reaction, an enolate will act as a nucleophile and add to a alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound, and that will give you a specific product. An aldol reaction will take an enolate, act as a nucleophile, and attack a aldehyde or a ketone, giving you a specific type of product. A Claisen reaction will take an enolate, use it as a nucleophile, and attack a ester, giving you a specific kind of product. So each one of these is going to be the same thing, an enolate adding to another type of compound, giving you a specific product in each of these cases. Okay, So you already know how to use enolates as nucleophiles. This is just showing you how to use enolates to add to different types of compounds. Alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compounds, aldehydes or ketones, or esters. Okay. All right, let me point out a couple more things about this outline because you might be looking at this plus condensation and plus decarboxylation and be like, what's going on there? Okay, so you'll find out all of this in detail later, but just as a general idea of where this is going, let me break this down for you. Okay, so hey, an aldol reaction, we said that this was a enolate adding to an aldehyde or a ketone. This will yield a very specific product. So an enolate will add to an aldehyde or a ketone, bring you to a very specific product. However, this specific product isn't the most stable it can be. So what you can do is, to get to the most stable product it can be, you can follow up an aldol reaction with condensation, so plus condensation. And this is mandatory because, okay, an aldol reaction will be an enolate adding to a aldehyde or a ketone, bringing you to a specific product that's not the most stable it can be. If you follow this up by condensation, you can get to the most stable product. And this is mandatory, I've written mandatory in parentheses here, because you always want to go to the most stable end product in chemistry, right you guys? So hey, aldol reaction, enolate plus an aldehyde or a ketone brings you to a specific product that's not the most stable it can be, so follow this up with some condensation which is mandatory because you always want to form the most stable end product. But what is this for Claisen reaction? 
Claisen reaction can be followed up by decarboxylation, but this is optional. What does this mean? Okay, so Claisen reaction, you take an enolate, add it to an ester, yielding a very specific product. But this very specific product is actually stable enough to exist as that product. But if you want to, you can follow this specific product up with another reaction called decarboxylation to bring you to a different end product. But this is optional, okay? So Claisen reaction, you take an enolate, add it to an ester. This will bring you to a specific product that's plenty stable. But if you want, you can do a decarboxylation on this, uh, but it's optional. And you're gonna find out all this in detail later, okay? Okay, so the last thing to point out on this outline is that, okay, if you know these three main types of reactions, you will know how to do these three mini reactions. Okay, so I've put a star next to each one of these reactions. These are mini reactions. These are just basically offshoots of the three main types of reactions. So if you know how to do these three, these three mini reactions are just subsets. They're just mini reactions of these three main types. Okay, so check it out, you guys. This first one, it says intramolecular aldol and Claisen reactions. This is saying, hey, if you know how to do an aldol reaction or a Claisen reaction, this can be done intramolecularly. You can do this in the same compound, okay? But we'll find out more about that later. But this is just saying, hey, if you know how to do an aldol, you know how to do a Claisen, you can do intramolecular ones of these, okay? Uh, the second mini reaction I have up here is called Robinson annulation, a complex title for something really simple. All Robinson annulations are is a Michaels reaction and a aldol reaction. So you do a Michaels reaction and then follow it up by an aldol reaction. I can't believe they named this after Robinson because hey, this was nothing new. He just took this reaction and then followed this up by the aldol reaction, okay? So that's all a Robinson annulation is. And this third mini reaction is saying, hey, decarboxylation of acetoacetic esters and malonic esters. Also sounds really complicated, is very, very simple. It's saying, hey, if you know how to do decarboxylation, you can decarboxylate these two types of compounds and this will yield two very specific products, okay? But hey, we're gonna deal with all of this later. I'm just trying to give you a general idea of where we're going with this, okay? Okay, so you've got your three main reactions with the three mini reactions. Let's go ahead and get into these right now. Okay, so we said that we're gonna be dealing with three main types of reactions in today's session. And what were those three? Well, there was the Michaels reaction where you had an enolate adding to a alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. The second one was the aldol reaction where you had an enolate add to a aldehyde or a ketone. Remember when you added an enolate to an aldehyde or a ketone, it made a very specific product, but that specific product wasn't the most stable, so we followed this up by condensation, which eventually yielded a more stable end product. The third reaction was the Claisen reaction where you took an enolate and added it to a ester. And this yielded a specific product that was stable enough on its own, but if you wanted to, you could do an optional decarboxylation. But let's go ahead and write these up in detail and compare them, okay? Okay, so here's the three main types of reactions. We've got the Michaels reaction, the Aldol reaction, and the Claisen reaction. Remember, the same general thing is going to happen in each one of these reactions. An enolate is going to act as a nucleophile and add to a different type of compound, depending on which type of reaction you're doing, okay? But same general thing is going to happen. Just gonna take an enolate and add it to another compound. So let's go ahead and write this down. In each one of these reactions, whether it be a Michaels reaction, an aldol reaction, or even a Claisen reaction, all that's gonna happen is, is that you're gonna take an enolate and add it to something else. So in each one of these, go ahead and write that in a Michaels reaction, an enolate is gonna to add to something else. In an aldol reaction, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna have an enolate add to something else. And in the Claisen reaction, the same thing's gonna happen. You're gonna take an enolate and add it to something else, okay? And we're gonna find out what these something else's are in just a second, or actually we revealed it in the general features, but we're gonna write it down in just a second, okay? 
Okay, so in each one of these reactions, all you're doing is taking an enolate and adding it to something else. But before we go on, I want to fill you in on the other name for a Claisen reaction. Don't you guys know what the other name for a Claisen reaction is? Another name for the Claisen reaction is actually the old lady reaction. Don't you guys know why this is called the old lady reaction? Okay, two reasons. One you won't know because it's very personal to me, and that is in eighth grade, my science teacher's name was Mrs. Claisen. She was the nicest old lady. She, uh, she was very well off, she was very wealthy, uh, so she didn't need to teach. She just came to teach because she was good at teaching, and she liked kids, and uh, she was a good teacher. Nice old lady. So whenever I see Claisen reaction, it always reminds me of Mrs. Claisen, my old eighth grade science teacher. Her name was actually Mrs. Clausen, but uh, Mrs. Claisen is close enough. Okay, uh, so that's one reason why this is called the old lady reaction. The second reason why this is called the old lady reaction is the types of compounds you're gonna deal with in this reaction. Because check it out, you guys. In a Michaels reaction, and an aldol reaction, you use any enolate you want. Make an enolate out of any type of compound you want. But for a Claisen reaction, this enolate has to be made from an ester. You have to make an ester enolate. Okay, so for the Michaels reaction and the aldol reaction, you can use any enolate you want. But for the Claisen reaction, you have to use an ester enolate, an enolate that's made from an ester. Okay, but hey, why is this called the old lady reaction? Why does using an ester enolate make this the old lady reaction? Well, hey, if you remember when we talked about esters before, I asked you, hey, do any of you guys have any friends named Esther? Some of you guys thought yes, some of you guys thought no. And then I asked you, isn't Esther a really old lady name for a person to have? Like, isn't that aging your kid before their time if you name them Esther? It's like, hey, Esther, you want to go out? It's like, Esther's like, oh, no, I'm Esther. I'm tired. I just want to stay home and watch TV, right? So I don't know, you guys. Whenever I see Esther, I think of an old lady. So if you're young and your name's Esther, sorry, I don't mean to offend you. I think it's just because... Uh, Esther, the only Esther I know is my Auntie Esther, and she's like the nicest old lady. So whenever I see Esther, I think of my Auntie Esther, nice old lady. Whenever I see Clay's in reaction, I think, hey, nice old lady that I had for an eighth grade science teacher. So this is like the old lady reaction. It's gonna be an even older lady reaction when you see what we add this to and what product comes out. But hey, this is how I remember this, you guys. This is not a diss to old ladies at all, all right? I love old ladies, they're the nicest things in the world, okay? so. Um, but this is the old lady reaction, and uh, make sure you use an ester enolate here, not just any enolate, okay? All right, so now that I filled you in on a little bit about the Claisen reaction, let's go ahead and knock each one of these reactions out one by one, okay? And in each one of these reactions, I told you that the only thing that's going to be happening is that you're going to take an enolate and add it to a different type of compound, giving you a specific product in each one of these cases. It was only for the Claisen reaction that you had to use this specific ester enolate. For a Michaels reaction or an aldol reaction, use any enolate you want. Any compound you can make an enolate out of, like an aldehyde, a ketone, an ester, that's fine. Okay, so. Any kind of enolate for a Michaels or an aldol reaction, it's just for the Claisen reaction that you use a specific ester enolate. Okay, but in each one of these reactions, all you're going to do is take an enolate, add it to a specific compound, and pop out a specific product. Okay, so let's go started on these. 